Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our honored guest. The Minister of, Minister, Ministry of Justice transferred two armored cars to the battalion Azov. And here to elaborate on this subject and uh, update us on this very nice news, well, the Pavlo Petrenko, the Minister of Justice of Ukraine, and Andrei Bilecki, uh, the battalion Azov commander. And also, after the press conference, you can see, you can witness these two cars here in front of the Hotel Ukraine. Good afternoon, dear friends. You know, Ukraine goes through difficult times, and we are in the state of war. And all citizens and uh, public institutions uh, must uh, consolidate and to help our uh, soldiers in the East. Um, the Minister of Justice uh, uh, is responsible for state executive service. There's a big subdivision, and there are a lot of cars which were confiscated uh, because of uh, certain procedures. And we, had, uh, we made a decision. And at present, um, the justice uh, bodies uh, we uh, shipped uh, uh, gave to ATO National Guards uh, 30 cars and uh, to security service and to uh, military forces of Ukraine. And uh, also today, during the, the big inventory through the system, we found a chance, a chance and uh, transfer two um, armored vehicles, micro buses, big buses, uh, Chevrolet, for the needs of our Azov battalion, and I believe that uh, they will be very useful to take uh, out wounded and to use them in uh, those difficult play, play, uh, places where they fight. Together with the, uh, the society, with NGOs, and together with um, uh, business government and uh, advocacy groups and uh, lawyers groups, uh, we initiated to help National Guards. And by the end of the week, we will buy five uh, drones, and they will be given uh, to uh, National Guards, and uh, they will be used uh, uh, in ATO area. And I would like uh, to uh, hand uh, keys to these vehicles, and I hope that they will save the, the lives of uh, guys who are fighting there. Good afternoon. Until now, we only mostly Ukrainian people and Jews, uh, volunteers helped us, all um, transportation and also um, munition. Now this is a very good signal uh, that um, the Ministry of Justice um, gets involved and uh, public authorities get involved. Uh, these are two vehicles. Two, two of my friends died yesterday, very close friends, uh, near Ilovaisk. Today, one of our um, friends' brothers was uh, wounded be, um, uh, between Ilovaisk and Moscow. These uh, vehicles are very needed. They can have the function of uh, evacuation vehicles uh, from the battlefield. So these are the vehicles which will help uh, save lives of uh, our military men there, because uh, they can, under the fire, they can get uh, to the to the front, get the get a wounded person, and uh, get back to the hospital. So this is the uh, assistance which uh, extremely needed, maybe yesterday and the day before yesterday. And that's it's uh, in time. So I would like to thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. If anybody would like to have a look, they are downstairs after inventory. inventory. All those uh, vehicles we have in the system, we will transfer them uh, to the National Guards, to our armed forces. Earlier, they were used uh, in different schemes, and they were sold, uh, free of charge, sold free of charge, free of charge. Now it's time to hand such vehicles to the places where it's when they are need needed. If they say one life, it's already good. So we invite all to such initiatives, and uh, we will uh, in get involved into this uh, process. And the next step are uh, drones, and uh, they will be needed uh, for our National Guards during ATO. Thank you. Any question? Those uh, five drones, will you buy them for the money of those uh, who, for the donation of those uh, 
who work in the Ministry of Justice. This is just a civic, um, a civic initiative, so starting with the minister and uh, and anyone uh, down to a lawyer. Uh, so all, uh, those will be donations of volunteers. My question is about sanctions. The sanctions. What's the algorithm of uh, using them? Last Friday, the Ukrainian government, at the initiative of the prime minister, we adopted the package of decisions and we brought it to the parliament at the law on sanctions, which uh, includes the whole comprehensive set against of sanctions against those uh, who, who support uh, ter ter uh, terrorists and separatists uh, in the east of Ukraine. That law is very important and uh, to warn the parliament must uh, consider it and approve it. And then all those uh, proposals of the government, which will announce uh, by the, uh, the prime minister as to sanctions of, uh, against uh, 60, uh, uh, 65 uh, Russian companies and other countries, and uh, to 175 uh, physical entities uh, that uh, should be considered. And then they will come in, into force and uh, they will be used uh, to people who who support uh, terrorists uh, in the East. And uh, that, that procedure with the political uh, will of uh, deputies uh, this, uh, they should express their political will, and that uh, they can, that law can, uh, can come into force in several days. On which stage uh, is the process of ratification of agreement on association with the EU, and when will it be ratified? Thank you for the question. The government of Ukraine did everything possible to uh, uh, prepare for ratification. I believe that, that, that the parliament will ratify that agreement as soon as possible. The Minister of Justice in two days gave conclusions and we sent uh, documents to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Any question? Ukrainian authorities say that Donetsk and Horlovka and Makevka are uh, surrounded. Is it true? You know the real situation there. And as a military man, how those Lugansk and uh, Donetsk, how to take those cities? Thank you. Uh, we don't speak about the complete, complete siege, but uh, the gut of, uh, of communication is very narrow. The group in Donetsk, uh, I mean, speak about uh, separatists, uh, they, they have a uh, shell uh, hunger, they cannot use uh, grid syst uh, systems, and, um, and uh, a lot of tension on their uh, stuff. As to taking the city, it's not, it's very painful, it's not easy, and uh, it should, must not be to connect it to any date like the independence of Ukraine or something. That requires uh, several weeks of uh, engagement. From a humanitarian point of view, it's not easy. We have to take uh, a district by district. We should uh, uh, build a humanitarian corridor center to take out people. That will not be a simple operation. To take uh, a city of uh, one million residents, that is one of the, um, the most uh, difficult uh, operation. And in the 20th and 21st century, this is operation number one for any military man. Uh, we will do that, but it will not happen soon. Where to buy? Will, will you buy drones? And will there be some uh, discounts? We receive information from uh, National Guard, so what kind of uh, drones they need for our, um, for our armed forces. And uh, as to discounts, uh, discounts, we will speak to providers, to producers. We will discuss that. It's not only about people who buy, but also company, companies uh, who sell those drones the best. 
We sent a request to the Ministry of Interior for them uh, to give us a complete list of what, they, what kind of uh, drones they need. We'll buy the best for them to be used and to, to be beneficial to our ITO and our National Guards. Petrenko, how important is the role of the battalions in the fighting, notably if there's house-to-house -house fighting in Donetsk? And the second question would be, um, uh, isn't it rather problematic for the government to cooperate with battalions like the Azov Battalion who have rather dubious right-wing convictions? Thank you for the question. You know, the role of every military man The role of every military man in ATO area those who are in battalions, in uh, National Guards, in uh, Ministry of Defense uh, units and police. Uh, it's a huge role. They are heroes because they risk their life every minute. And these are the best guys, the, main, uh, the best representatives of Ukrainian nation who fight for our independence. I'm uh, convinced that volunteers, those who got self-organized into battalions like Azov, they are the most uh, motivated to uh, to win because they came on their own. They were not mobilized. They they came and joined uh, these battalions because of the call of their heart, and they fight in the most difficult areas. There is no problem of uh, communication between the government and these battalions. We help them to that extent we, we can. And they are the best representatives of Ukrainian uh, nation. And I, Andrei can, probably can, can tell you more about communication, how they communicate uh, with uh, National Guards, uh, with the Ministry uh, of Defense. Sincerely, communication, mutual assistance, is uh, quite good with the uh, Ministry of Defense and with the uh, National Guards. And with the Ministry of Defense, we have some disagreements, but but on the level of engagement, uh, there is a horizontal communication. So commanders, commanders of uh, uh, units uh, communicate, uh, so compliance complete. And we send our infantry or support or anything and um, they if they can they send uh, uh, tanks and uh, other equipment to help us so communication the first period when the, the communication was very difficult we, we are over that period and now we have less of bureaucratic obstacles and uh, steps and uh, whatever and uh, so, it's, communication is on a on a, a pretty good level. Everything is positive in terms of uh, work with the government and uh, governmental uh, law enforcement bodies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Those vehicles are at the entrance to Hotel Ukraine. Thank you.